Okay, thank you so much, Cohen. Thanks so much, Cohen. Uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, thank you to the Access Agile uh, organizers uh, for having this amazing festival, uh, bringing access to the knowledge and uh, community of Agile across the world. Um, today's session is about status versus inspect and adapt, a story of chicken curry. And uh, it's chicken curry because, uh, you know, quick background, I am from India and uh, chicken curry is one of the popular delicacies there. So we'll talk about that. A uh, little bit about me. I, uh, I work in Agile as my, my current job is an Agile coach. I work uh, uh, in, in the, currently in the uh, uh, private industry, but I have worked in banking, public sector, government for over 13 years, helping teams with Agile. And uh, over time, my passion has been to identify those hidden anti-patterns that, that go unnoticed and bring those to light and help uh, bring agility uh, to the organizations. So with that, I will go ahead and get started. So quickly, the way uh, you know, this session will go is I'll share a story. It's a personal story. Uh, about family dinner, something lightweight. And you know, if you are in, in US right now, this is lunch time, so I'm sure uh, it will probably make you a little hungry. Um, and uh, the story is going to have some, you know, some characters, some events that happen, and an outcome uh, it will be either a great outcome, a happy ending, or a tragic outcome. And then we'll be learning from the story and uh, uh, you know, using those learning to connect them with how you know, things go about in an agile world um, and, uh, and connect those dots, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and get started. These are the characters. Like I said, the story has characters. That's me and my wife, and I have two little boys. They are uh, six years and three years old. And uh, each story has a protagonist and an antagonist. So you must be wondering who that is. Uh, well, the protagonist of the story is chicken curry and the antagonist is time. Just like, just like our real world, right? Uh, our, our work uh, atmosphere. So this, is, uh, this happened on a typical work day. Uh, this was during the pandemic. We were both, me and my wife were working from home. And uh, as you can see from our faces, we were kind of working late. This was almost, this was end of day. And uh, if everyone can mute their uh, laptops. So yeah, this was end of day and uh, we were kind of later than usual and uh, trying to wrap up our work. Our kids had already finished school and they were basically getting hungry. So little one was coming in saying, Mom, Dad, we're hungry. We need we need dinner, and uh, we need something to eat. Is what they were saying. So we were like, okay, fine. And then we basically wrapped up our day, and uh, then we were both wondering, okay, what do we have? What 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 do we have to do this evening? Uh, what are we going to do about dinner? That's like our highest priority. And then there were other chores. There were other other things to do. So we were wondering, and then we finally, you know, decided on the plan. Uh, that dad would be making the famous chicken curry. So that's my specialty. I have been doing this since I was in college 20 years ago. Um, so over time I have perfected the recipe and uh, I decided, okay, you know, I'll make that chicken curry and make a great, awesome meal for the family. And uh, my wife had some, uh, some serious gardening to do to save our veggie patch in the backyard. So she decided to do some gardening. That was the plan, right? So we got to work. Uh, she headed out to, to do some gardening and I started on my, my chicken curry. And the kids, you know, they went, they were, they were, they were waiting for dinner. So they, you know, they, they went to the backyard and played there for a little while. Uh, they got tired there and then um, came in and, and started watching TV. So, and I was busy. Uh, with all of the elaborate recipe that I had perfected over the years uh, with you know, all the uh, 
the pre-prep work, marination, stuff like that, getting all the veggies prepared, the, the saute and everything. And the uh, kids were obviously, uh, like I mentioned before, very hungry. So he, he the, the older one was coming in and, and asking, hey dad, when will the dinner be ready? And I, and I was excited to see that he was hungry. So I was like basically excited about having a great outcome out of my, all of my effort. Uh, so he came in a few more times. I mean, it wasn't just once he came in a few more times asking, hey, what are you cooking? And what are we gonna have for dinner? I'm really hungry. He would keep asking me and I'm, I was happy that he was he was hungry. So I told him, yeah, just you know, wait for a little while. It's almost ready. And uh, sometime halfway through, as I was cooking, my wife checked in on me, uh, you know, from from the backyard. She was like, "Hey, honey, how's it going?" And uh, and I, you know, I I told her, you know, everything that I had done because I was really excited. So I told her about all the ingredients that I was using and uh, um, what I had done so far. And, um, you know, what I was going to do, you know, all of the marination, all of the ingredients, saute, salad, stuff like that. And I also mentioned that I was using cilantro because uh, she had recommended it last time. So I wanted to make her happy. So, uh, you know, I mentioned that and she was, you know, she heard all of that and she gave me two thumbs up and she's like, okay, I think you got it under control. And she went back to her, her gardening work. So I continued on with my, my, my cooking and I, you know, put together everything on the dinner table, uh, nicely, you know, presented. And then I, and I, you know, I was very happy with the outcome. And I called out to the kids, said, hey kids, dinner is ready. Um, and uh, I got no response. Um, so I was like, that's surprising. They're, you know, both kids were so hungry, and uh, how come nobody is responding? Uh, but uh, that's fine. It wasn't like I had poured all of my heart and effort into making dinner for them, so I wasn't pissed or anything. I just said it in a more loving voice that, "Hey, kids, dinner is ready. Please come in." And uh, and the older one came in. Um, he sat on the he sat on the on the chair, and uh, he was like, "I'm not hungry." And I was surprised. I was like, what? You, you were coming in, you came in at least 10 times looking for, uh, you know, asking when dinner will be ready. And now you're saying you're not hungry. What's, what's going on? It took me a while to realize. That I remember he, the older one, he was he's coming in and out so many times. He was actually reading the cookie jar. Because he, he asked me about dinner and as he can, he could see that it was going to be a while. He he saw the cookies in front of him. You know, just take one with him. So I guess by this time he was three or four cookies down and completely full, and there was no chance that he was going to have dinner. He was going to eat anything. So you know, I kind of gave up on him. I told him, okay, buddy, you know, just sit and see what you want to eat. If you, if you, if you don't want uh, want to eat anything, it's fine. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just go get the, the, the little one. Uh, at least he will have the nice dinner and all of that, but will not go to waste. So I went to the, the family room to, to get him, uh, only to find out that uh, he had fallen asleep on the couch watching TV. And uh, I was like, what's going on? And, you know, I mean, a toddler, if he falls asleep, at least this, you know, my little one wouldn't get up if I, no matter how much I tried. I did try. Uh, but he didn't get up. So I finally gave up. And then it was just me and my wife. And we had, uh, we had our sad dinner. And uh, we went back, you know, we went, went to bed and, and called it a day. So that's the story, you know, started out very exciting, started out with, you know, dreams in our eyes, and then ended up being a uh, uh, not so happy ending. So, so what went wrong? This, you know, let's let's do a root cause analysis here. What's going on there? Right? What was the goal of the evening? You know, let's let's think about it as you know, as an agilist. Let's try to get a little nerdy on this. What was the goal? What were the key moments that mattered? And what could have been done differently? So let's let's take these one by one. So was the goal? to make an awesome chicken curry 
or was it to impress my wife and kids with my culinary skills or was it that ensure, ensure the entire family has a good meal it's probably quite obvious right it's third one ensure entire family has a good balance i just wanted to make sure we are all aligned on that now let's talk about what were the key moment was there a moment in this story in this entire evening if things were done differently everything would have changed and, and we would have had a different outcome so was it when we were planning me and my wife were planning what to do for dinner and we ended up with the wrong people doing the wrong work maybe i should have headed out to the garden and she should have cooked so probably that would have been faster or was it when my son was coming in to take the cookies and i should have been more vigilant you know always keeping my eye on the on on his uh, on his mis- mischiefs uh, while cooking or was it when my wife checked in halfway through and she she asked me how's it going and what did i do i gave her a detailed account of everything that i had done and everything that i was planning to do and i also tried to make her happy by mentioning cilantro and what not and she listened to all that i don't know if she listened to all of that she probably heard it halfway through and then zoned out and then gave me two thumbs up and then went back i think that's that's probably one of the key moments so what happened there you know think about it did i have to give her the full account of everything that i was doing or everything that i was going to do it, it it wasn't innovation it wasn't something new i had been doing it for years like i mentioned since my college days and she has seen me do it hundreds of times so she did not need to know everything that i was doing right that's why i said once when i when i spoke all of that when i gave her my status update she probably heard it halfway through and zoned out and then gave her two thumbs up to go back right we basically had a status conversation completely missed the risks to our goal the goal that we set out right our focus was my focus was primarily on the chicken curry making it great and telling her how great it was going to be right we didn't even talk about kids so there was the there was the there was the you know culmination of that evening but obviously we we make dinner every day and uh we ran into similar situation almost you know every day so this situation happened again very similar few weeks later where again i was there cooking my chicken curry and that kind of reminded me the previous time it happened this this had happened so uh that's why i'm bringing this second instance of the same situation in our store and what happened this time around this time around when my wife came in to check uh how how i was doing this time she was doing some other chore i think she was doing laundry so halfway through the laundry she came in and she checked like hey honey how's it going instead of giving her that entire status update we decided to bring in our forgotten character who's the forgotten character there the antagonist we brought in time we checked we looked at the clock we looked at the kids and saw how they were doing whether they were you know if if one of them was looking sleepy things like that and we decided okay we got to make a pivot decision so we decided to pivot deprioritized other work that my wife was doing and i asked her hey looks like i'm going to be running late can you please help me with meal prep and also we got the kids started on on the salad we engaged our customers early right so what what was the final outcome of that because we made that pivot we ended up having a good balanced meal for the evening entire family so that's the story wanted to make sure that we have a happy ending to the story now before we move on um maybe we can engage and chit chat a little bit uh can we talk about what were some of the anti patterns that you saw in the story you guys can unmute and talk one of the anti pattern i can think of is gold plating as trying to make the curry as much uh you know the product 
as cool and as awesome as possible. Uh, the other I could think of is my time to market. Uh, I forgot or completely ignored the time to market aspect of when my customers or stakeholders needed the product. Uh, but I was more focused on having, you know, building a great product. Um, and then we talked about the, the communication aspect, right? I uh, engaged with, uh, with my, my uh, you know, either you can say team member or my leadership. You know, of course, I think she is my leadership. Uh, I engaged with my leadership and I gave a status update. I did not communicate effectively, right? So those were some of the anti-patterns we saw in, in that one, you know, uh, evening. So let's connect it. Let's apply it to our context. What is status? And, uh, uh, and we can draw some contrast with inspect and adapt. So status is a, is a one-way conversation uh, where you know, one, one, you know, either, either a person or, or whoever is providing the status is disseminating the information to the rest of the audience. That is the primary goal. There is some back and forth, of course, uh, there might be some, you know, takeaways or some, you know, instruction coming back from from whoever is using the status. But the primary goal is still information dissemination from one side to the other. And whereas inspect and attack is more of a collaborative discussion, a discussion around what could be the risks to our goal, what action should we take to mitigate or resolve those risks, and successfully accomplish the goal. That's a, that's a clear contrast between status and inspect and adapt, right? So what happens? Why do uh, our meetings tend to become status reporting sessions? So let's look at agile events, scrum events. Most of them are designed to be inspect and adapt. Some of them are designed to be sort of a one-way flow, like the demo, uh, you know, you would want it to be inspect and adapt, but there's a lot of uh, demonstration of the work, um, and uh, you would have stand-ups and scrum strums. These are supposed to be events where you would want to make sure that you are inspecting and adapting, because uh, those are the check-ins, checkpoints, either throughout the sprint or um, you know for for your uh, teams to collaborate, multiple teams to collaborate in scrum strums, and figure out are there any risks to our goals, right? What happens? What what really happens? Right? They tend to become a little bit more status oriented. So let's let's look at some of the reasons why that happens. Now, as we talked about, you know, status is more of a um, a one way dissemination of information, right? In agile teams, what happens is the work is uh, planned just in time, and things are fast, you know, changing quickly. And that causes some lack of transparency. And usually if you have leaders, if you have teams, leaders, if you have program leaders, they do not want to appear as if they do not have a handle on things. They are not on top of things, right? So they are always curious about what is going on. What is the latest status? They want to know, right? And whenever they get a chance to engage or interact, they end to end up asking those questions. So lack of transparency, and you know, if there is not an easy way to get that info, they will ask those questions. Now, how can we avoid what can be done, right? One of them is big visible information radiators. And I use that term generally in a very general fashion because I'm referring to, let's say you're using Jira or Rally to manage your work, or I mean, right now it's pandemic, but in general, we would have agile uh, team sitting in sitting in in a large you know bullpen, uh, so having your Scrum board over there, um, if your work is properly being reflected on these big visible information radiators, it will be easy for anyone to see what is going on, what is the latest status by going to these um, information radiators, right? Having that uh, good understanding of how to use them having the right expectations around the data quality in that 
uh, it, that all helps in making sure that the status aspect is taken care of to a large extent by these tools, right? Now, the second part is perception and recognition. Um, the status shows, you know, whenever you're in a status meeting, the person providing the status is talking about what they have done, what they have accomplished so far, what they are going to do. Everything is positive, right? Uh, primarily positive, right? And uh, uh, just like I was giving my status update on the chicken curry, you know, everything was positive. I was telling her every, all the good things that I have done. And people want to do that. People who are providing the information, whether it's team members, whether it is team leads providing the information to the program leads, they want to talk about what they have done so far, right? To get that recognition, to get that appreciation. Compare that with inspect and adapt. The primary goal is to highlight problems, to highlight what are the issues you're facing, right? And that is basically, in crude terms, being the bearer of bad news. And nobody wants to be the bearer of bad news, right? So there is that tendency to not be the one who is bringing bad news and, and bringing problems in the conversations, right? Folks want to always take it offline, want to address it offline, right? Uh, yeah, how many times have you heard about you know, somebody bringing up a problem, discussing it for a few seconds, and then saying, oh, let's take it offline, right? So that is another cultural aspect of an organization where bringing up problems, where you have to point uh, you know, pinpoint the problem. Maybe there are people involved and you end up having, you know, someone um, who is responsible for the problem uh, brought into the conversation. And that ends up being something that folks don't want to do. So if leadership engage with the, the teams and encourage that transparency, encouraged that type of communication, then that will help resolve that cultural issue. So we talked about you know, why, these, why these things happen. Let's talk about specific tactical scenarios. And I'm, and I'm bringing that up because I wanna have all of us to have some takeaways, you know, something tactical that you can take with you and, and maybe implement uh, and see some incremental improvement, right? So we're, we're gonna talk about daily scrum and scrum scrums. So daily scrum, this is a, you know, team level event scrum master usually facilitates and uh, it's usually every morning uh, team comes together to talk about you know what they had done the day before and what they want to do that day and any impediments that's the general agenda right but what really happens what happens in most of the teams if you are a team member you might have seen team members tend to become quite mechanical in their updates right in their input. What they talk about is maybe the tasks they worked on the previous day. And uh, sometimes they're just gonna continue on the, on the same story that day and uh, no impediments. You know, that almost uh, folks go into a mechanical way of delivering their input to the standard. It becomes repetitive, dull, right? So what happens? is you know you you miss all the opportunities to pivot or collaborate and uh, the blockers or the impediments they are found very late in the game very late in the sprint when it becomes quite apparent that some stories will not be be completed um, but we're not able to connect the dot hey we we did not talk about this 3 days ago or 4 days ago when we could have you know made a quick change in how we are prioritizing our work and maybe we could have accomplished more, right? So what can be done? So, sorry about that. So what can be done? Well, one of the things is start with the sprint goals. Whenever a standard being facilitated, just like I talked about, you know, what was the goal of the evening, right? I first aligned us on the goal of the evening was to have a meal a uh, good balanced meal for the entire family. It wasn't to, to have an awesome chicken curry or to impress anyone, right? So once we were aligned on the goal, it was easy for us to figure out, hey, you could have made a pivot, right? So start with the sprint goals. It takes maybe 20 to 30 seconds to flash it up on the screen if you are facilitating the standup and 
make sure everyone looks at it, you know, plain business mm -hmm. language, three to four sentences, outlining what the sprint goals are. That way, everybody's mind is thinking about, hey, most important thing is to accomplish those four bullets, right? Not to finish the task at hand, but to accomplish those four bullets, right? Everybody's mindset kind of changes and aligns. Second is focus on impediments. And you'll see this theme getting repeated in other, in the other uh, aspects also, but make sure one is focus on impediment means that encourage team members to bring impediments or, you know, uh, have folks talk about impediments for something to, to make folks understand, make team members understand that we are here to talk about impediments. We're not trying to get status update. We're not trying to see how much you worked or if you're working hard or if you're, if you're being utilized enough. We're trying, we're here to figure out what could be in the way of accomplishing those goals, right? Another thing, it's an anti-pattern I've seen across the industry and I've worked in the government also. So I've seen that, you know, a lot of managers, you try to use standups as a way to get people to start their day early, you know, get people to come to work on time and a discipline, you know, bring some discipline. But honestly, not everybody is a morning person. You're going to have people walking into the office, setting their laptop on the table, walking into a standup that has already started two minutes ago, three minutes ago, and somehow making it to, to the standup and then giving their input, still trying to figure out what they were working on yesterday. Sometimes they say, oh, I forgot what I was, what was I working on yesterday? I mean, these are the common occurrences, right? If you want people to really participate and talk about the goals, have a higher level, bigger picture view, you're gonna to have to give them some time, make it a little bit more realistic for them to talk about uh, the big picture and what can be done. Talk about something more than their work at hand or task at hand, right? And then I say no Scrum Master facilitation necessary, but I don't mean that you don't need the Scrum Master in the standard, you do. But the Scrum Master doesn't need to facilitate your meeting and go do a round robin one by one asking people, hey, what is your update? It's, it's a basic standup. Everybody's aware of and have been doing it for years. I mean, we are at 20 years into when Agile was born. So everybody knows what a daily standup is. So you really don't need a Scrum Master facilitating going one by one. What you do need is the Scrum Master focusing on impediments, jumping in and taking action or taking action items, figuring out what needs to be done, bringing people together to resolve them, and preventing rabbit holes if necessary. But you don't need facilitation where the Scrum Master is uh, you know, running it. That's some of the things, these are just suggestions. These are not you know, uh, silver bullets to make it work. Everybody has different contexts. So uh, some things might uh, give you some positive results, but these are just some recommendations. Let's talk about Scrum of Scrums. Similar event, however, this is a little bit more political. It, it gets a little bit more political in nature because it's not a team level. It's you got the program leadership involved. You have the team leads providing their updates. Uh, sometimes upper management joins, you know, just to see how the program is doing. You don't know who's going to join. The invite has been extended to a lot of people. And that's why folks are always cautious about who is joining this meeting and what they are saying. Sometimes the format is also very structured. So it, it is seen by the team leads as a way to provide status update to the program manager, right? It, it, it's like, uh, hey, this is, what, this is what we have accomplished so far, right? And, it, and like I said before, a tendency to show that everything is under control. We don't need to escalate things. Or if we are escalating, you know, let's make sure we check with people beforehand so that Nobody is, you know, we don't make somebody, you know, make somebody look bad. Yeah, there's a lot of tendency to do that. In fact, I have had, I've been in a situation where I brought up a risk and later on the person ping me saying, hey, why'd you bring it up in that sort of stuff? You could have just, you know, uh, talked about it separately with me. And it wasn't just about that one person. It was a more of a broader risk that I brought up and that needed some action from multiple folks. But this person was worried about their year-end performance and what this particular risk made them look like in the eyes of the boss who was also on the call. 
So that's the cultural aspect behind this, right? And uh, I mentioned wrong participants because like I said, this is a closely guarded meeting where people want to make sure that the, the folks who are attending are the ones who know what to say and not just, you know, blurt something out, especially in contractor, uh, a situation where there's a client and a contracting company and stuff like that. So there is that fear of, you know, what someone might say, you know, that might make somebody look bad or, uh, you know, is not will will let the the pen you know open the Pandora's box or something like that. So folks tend to make sure there's only Scrum masters, product owners, attending, providing status, and then sometimes it's just some some lead you know who is responsible for this event. And then, oftentimes it's a one-way informational flow. You know, everybody talks about what they are working on, what they have accomplished so far. There's no issues. We don't have any problems. We're on track, everything is looking green, and people go their merry way. And I'm not saying that happens everywhere, but you know, I have I have seen, I have observed, it happens a lot in politically charged at you know atmosphere organizations where there is uh, some of that. So what can we do to improve? Just like stand up, I would say focus on impediments, focus on blockers, risks. Uh, make it the primary agenda. If you're facilitating, if you're an RTE, instead of bringing up the list of features, all the stories, all the, you know, the whole backlog that the teams are working on, bring up just the list of impediments, issues, risks, whatever you want to call it. Just have that on the screen so that the conversation is focused on those risks, right? Encourage transparency. If you're leadership, Make sure you are uh, encouraging the, the folks attending the Scrum Stumps to be transparent. Appreciate them if they, if they bring up uh, risks and issues. Now, accelerate communication using tools such as Jira, Rally. So what do I mean by this? In most cases, if people do bring up something, it is a, a risk getting introduced to the people. First time they're hearing about it, right? There is no... Uh, it becomes hard to have a fruitful conversation as a, around resolution or mitigation if you are hearing about it the first time. You haven't had a chance to think about, it, right? So, and scrum terms usually, I mean, it, it's not uh, it's not a frequent event or a daily event. Some organizations do, some don't. Some have twice a week, some have once a week. So, people tend to wait for that event to bring things up. Uh, my recommendation is don't do that. Use your use these communication tools like Jira. You know, highlight the open a risk, highlight it, tag people so that people are notified of um, a concern. It doesn't have to be a blocker or an impediment that is already blocking you. Even if it's a concern, feel free to open it uh, as a risk in 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 whatever tool you're using, and notify people that you have started conversation. You have opened a, a risk. And you want people to think about it so that when the larger group comes together, let's say in the Scrum of Scrums, they're able to move the conversation forward instead of just knowing about it. Set those expectations that when you come to the Scrum of Scrums, you should have already gone through risks that have already been opened and information that has already been provided. And pull in the right people. Don't be afraid to bring in team members. Sometimes the information is with the team members and not the Scrum Master. Sometimes it's quite technical. Maybe the tech lead also is not uh, fully informed on a particular issue that a person or a team member is facing. It's okay to pull them in, let them, let them talk and express whatever challenges they are facing. Good facilitation should keep it uh, you know, focused, but let people join. So those are some of the recommendations uh, for a couple of you know, high impact Scrum events or Agile events that uh, tend to become status meetings. And uh, hopefully through this story and uh, this conversation, you were able to get some uh, good insights, were able to have uh, a lightweight, uh, you know, while you're having your lunch and uh, were able to learn something. So if there is one thing that you're gonna take back with you, just one out of all of this talk and implement in your life, it's don't forget to add cilantro to your chicken.
correct all right folks that's the end of this this uh, presentation hope you enjoyed thank you so much for joining and uh, if you have any questions feel free to unmute your mic and uh, uh, and let's hear it i am looking at the the chat yeah some good comments here yeah if my son wasn't afraid of me getting yell, you know him getting yelled at about every time he he touches the cookie jar he would have been more open with me that hey if the food is not ready i'm just going to eat something people are working on unrelated items so their progress doesn't have a larger meaning that happens right when they are focused on a task at hand and they are only talking about those tasks so it's the conversation that has to change right you bring up the goals and then people are thinking about those goals and 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 you know you kind of set that context also that hey this is what we're trying to accomplish so help us with that right i have seen a uh, team member saying uh, you know after after they were aligned on on sprint goals right before the stand up discussion began um one of the team members I, i remember saying you know what i'm working on this story and i'm on track but i realized that you need help with your story and that's a higher priority you know looking at these goals so what i can do is i can put my stuff on the back burner and help you out he said this to another team member so that is that is the collaboration that we are looking for from stand ups right sorry So this is a very quiet group i know um hello yes go ahead so i took a very good takeaway because i uh, what i took from your um briefing is people are very focused on the output uh, and they totally miss the outcome and right. uh, so you know realigning them and and refocusing them to what the set out outcome was for for that sprint or or that iteration is yeah. is very important right and i struggle with that all the time because our developers want to get things perfect or the qa wants to get so they are just focused on perfection um exactly. and they totally lose track of you know uh, are we on track and are we making the right uh, uh, outcome uh, right because some of these are time sensitive so um, yeah. so yeah. that was a good story thank you so much thank you yeah. all right folks Thank you right. for the interesting story, for the good presentation. Um, this session has been recorded, so uh, it will be available online for others who want to review it afterwards. So no worries if you missed part of it or everything. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cohen, for hosting. I appreciate your contribution to this festival. Uh, this is a great uh, event. With pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much.